Welcome to Sportsbeat KC, the Kansas City Stars Daily Sports Podcast. It's Friday, July 10th, and I'm Blair Kirkhoff. The MLS is back. That is a true, if simple, sentence and the name of the tournament in Orlando, Florida, involving most of the MLS teams. Sporting KC makes its return to competition on Sunday night against Minnesota. Today we'll hear from sporting players Matt Beasler and Kyrie Shelton, as well as Coach Peter Vermees about restarting the season after a four-month layoff and the demonstration of support for the Black Lives Matter movement adopted by the players in the league. But first we'll hear from Sean Goodwin, who covers Sporting Kansas City for the Star. He brings us up to date on Sporting and the MLS. So here we go. Sean Goodwin covers Sporting Kansas City for the Star, and he joins us uh, on the eve of the restart for Sporting KC. They're in Orlando at the MLS is Back tournament. We've seen a couple of games so far, at least on television, Sean, uh, from the tournament. And I'm wondering if uh, any impressions from – I watched a little bit of the Miami-Orlando game and saw highlights of – um, one of the New York teams playing Montreal, but I'm wondering if there's any anything that you've seen in those games, and maybe anything you might have heard from Peter Vermees or Kyrie Shelton or Matt Beasler to give us an indication of what we might expect Sunday night when Sporting Kansas City takes on Minnesota at seven o'clock. For sure, uh, I'm kind of in the same boat as you, Blair. I saw all of Wednesday night's game, um, the Inter Miami Orlando game. I uh, didn't get to see last night's games or yesterday's games, unfortunately. But uh, again, just based off what I've seen, what I've heard, uh, Wednesday night's game, uh, you know, it's what we really expect, as I suppose. It's not the 100% top quality that we're, we're used to. Uh, but, you know, fitness levels were better than we expected. Uh, you know, I was really expecting to see performance drop off in the second half and I don't think performance levels per se have been dropping off, but we have seen the goals being scored in the second half, which, you know, maybe coming from fatigue and loss of concentration, that kind of stuff. Uh, but now I'm excited for a sporting game. I mean, up against Minnesota should be a a huge game. And, you know, from what we've heard from the Mies and his team, you know, they've been on the, the practice field for a month or so now there. They're kind of at least in game shape, so you'd hope that they have somewhat of an advantage fitness-wise and mentality-wise heading into Sunday, but I guess we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. I I was wondering, it's been you know, four months, right, since mm-hmm. they played, and I'm wondering in the lifetime of the, the you know a Matt Beasler or any of these any of these players how long how many times in their lives they've gone four months without without a competition. It, that's you know that that's unheard of. I mean, because you, when you're when you're a youth, you're you're always playing, right? And yep. um, and and, uh, and in the off season in MLS is isn't very long, and they're international competition. So mm-hmm. this is just such an unusual place for all athletes to be, really, not just soccer players, but but all athletes because of the COVID pandemic. Um, you know, I thought you asked a couple of interesting, que- interesting questions about water breaks. That's one, one thing we're seeing in, in the first, um, w- w- when do they take these breaks during the games? Is it, mm-hmm. about, try, do they try to do it about halfway through the halves? Yeah, it's about halfway through the half. So, uh, you know, we're 22, 23 minute mark, but at the end of the day, it's just, you know, you have to wait until the ball goes out to play. Uh, I think it was the Miami Orlando game. Um, it might have been even a Premier League game, honestly, but, uh, you know, they wanted to take the water break around the 22-minute mark and the ball didn't go out of place or the 30-minute mark. <laughs> uh, so you, you just had to keep going and going and going. So, yeah, the aim is around halfway, but it's kind of, you know, it's they're supposed to be dead centre halfway through the half and, you know, Matt and uh, Peter, they both said it's, which is right, it's akin to a timeout so to speak, um, involuntary timeout, granted. But if, right. you're, if your team is struggling, it comes at a good time. If you're kind of on the front foot, it can sort of be a hindrance, I guess, as the momentum goes away from your team. You know, you might go out a little bit slack. You know, it's, it's an interesting concept. And, you know, I asked Peter about, is this something that he likes to see in the future? Uh, even if it's just one timeout per team for a whole game, and 
he, he didn't seem too interested, which is fair. But it, it's certainly an interesting dynamic for this tournament. Absolutely. Well, another interesting dynamic for this tournament. The first, by the way, uh, in the in the U.S. Uh, for the, the women's started uh, the women's professional st- soccer has started, but uh, and, and then now the men. So it's the first sport, team sport, to return to the United States, and sporting will be the first team wearing a, a Kansas City uniform back mm-hmm. in action for you know for uh, for fans here. Um, but the other the other big storyline, of course, the MLS have been the the demonstrations of the players. Uh, I watched. Uh, I made sure to tune in the uh, to the opening of the of the coverage on um, uh, on uh, Thursday night. Between or was it Wednesday? I can't remember another date now. But anyway, between Miami and Orlando, where um, not just the, not just the the participants of the teams on the field, but also players throughout the MLS taking the field in a in in, in a um, uh, c- circling the circling the pitch and there was uh, what eight minutes and 46 seconds of yeah. silence mm-hmm. um uh the the right fist raised uh, as well and uh, a pretty powerful moment I-, I thought and we got to talk to Kyrie Shelton a little bit about that what were your thoughts about the uh, you know about the demonstration and where it goes from here yeah I mean it's certainly powerful and it's it's great to see for sure uh, you know the Essential, as you were saying, MLS is the first I guess, men's professional major league back. So, you know, many of the eyes of the nation were on MLS, that first game on uh, on Wednesday. And you couldn't really think of a more powerful demonstration than the 8 minutes 46, you know, fist raised. But even since then, I mean, we saw uh, Philadelphia on their game. They had... Uh, the names, well, the same names of different, you know, uh, victims of police brutality and so on and so forth on the back of their jerseys for their games. Um, as for sporting on Sunday, uh, Kyrie was being a little hush hush about it. He didn't want to tell people, but I do know that sporting, they'll have a banner on the bottom of their jerseys and they can write down a personalised message or name. So, you know, that's something that sporting is doing. You know, starting Sunday, and I imagine going forward, and um, it, it's not going to stop anytime soon in MLS or you know sports as a whole because sports is such a great vehicle for uh, you know giving people a voice and getting a message out to the nation. Really, that's exactly right. I mean, we're seeing in other sports, um, and, and probably the the, the biggest, uh, most obvious example of that is. The Washington Redskins seriously consider changing their their nickname, um, and um, and then the, the 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 Cleveland Indians also doing the same. So, yeah. okay, Sean, uh, we're going to take a break. When we come back, you're going to hear from Matt Beasler, Kyrie Shelton, and Sporting KC coach Peter Vermees. Sean, it was great talking to you, and uh, we will catch up. We'll catch up again soon. Yes, sir. I'm sure, we will. Thank you. Hey, it's Blair. We have a special subscription offer for Sportsbeat KC listeners, unlimited digital access to the Kansas City Star's award-winning sports coverage. Sign up now for one year of Sports Pass for access to all the sports news, features, and columns presented on the KansasCity.com site, and it's only $30. That's a 40% savings off our regular rate. Your subscription will automatically renew after the initial term at $50 unless you tell us to cancel. Your subscription helps support the sports coverage of KansasCity.com and the Kansas City Star, and that support has never been more important. Please visit KansasCity.com slash SportsBeatKC offer to get this special offer. And as always, thanks for listening. I appreciate the time here. I'm just curious what bubble life is like. We've seen uh, J.R. Smith in the NBA say that he's not a big fan of it so far. Uh, what's it been like for you guys? Yeah, for me, uh, it, it hasn't been too bad. Uh, you know, when, when I got here, I definitely had questions about how things were going to be run. But uh, overall, it was it's a lot more organized than I thought it would be. The the protocols and the processes that we have to go through in terms of like getting tested and the meals and training times, all of that, uh, I've I've been quite impressed with. So, uh, yeah, I mean. Overall, it hasn't been too bad. Matt, just to focus on the game, um, Minnesota and you guys were 
built pretty uh, impressive out of the gate to start the season. And granted, that was four months ago. Um, but it seems like there's a chance to perhaps make a statement of sorts uh, when you guys do meet. H- how do you kind of view this coming together with two clubs that, like I said, objectively were probably the more impressive ones to start the season? Yeah, well, first of all, unfortunately, uh, I don't think anything that happened uh, at the beginning of the season is going to play a factor into into these games. It's just been it's been too long. There's been too much time in between the games. Uh and like I said, that's unfortunate because we, we were playing great at the beginning of the season and we had a lot of momentum. So we, uh, we, we're going to have to start all over again. And it's up to us to, uh, to create that momentum again. Um, in terms of Minnesota, it, it's a tough matchup. Uh, you know, I think Minnesota, within the past year or two, they've really turned a corner as a team and as a club. Uh, obviously, they made the playoffs for the first time in club history last year. And, uh, you know, they're going to be feeling good about that. And so, uh, yeah, we expect a tough matchup. And, um, you know, th- they're always organized when we play them. And so, you know, Sunday's probably going to be no different. Uh, I'd, I'd like to hear from uh, both guys, if we could, uh, just your reaction, uh, first of all, to the demonstration that went on at the uh, first match with the Black Lives Matter uh, movement. Uh, what, what, was the conversation like? How did that get organized amongst the players? Is it league wide? And, and what do you guys have planned, uh, if anything, for Sunday? Yeah, so, um, you know, Black Players Coalition um, or Black Players for Change, um, we are able to get in, in talks and communication with one another and having talks about what we were going to do. And um, we spread that through the whole league. Um, and then, as you saw in the first game, we were able to demonstrate that. And we wanted to bring across a powerful message. Yeah, I, I can, you know, kind of back Kyrie up. Uh, Kyrie was on the field for that demonstration. I was not. I was back at the hotel in the bubble. Uh, so what I witnessed was something different than him, but it was incredibly powerful. Uh, what I saw on on TV on the broadcast this guy next to me Kyrie has been uh, one of our leaders um, in in our locker room in terms of you know social change so I give him a lot of credit for for you know standing up and and leading us it takes a lot of courage for uh, for him to do that and uh, yeah I just I give him a lot of props and respect because uh yeah, if, if, if you weren't able to witness, you know, that demonstration, uh, I highly recommend it. It was it was very powerful and it was it was special to see so many, you know, different people from different teams all come together at once. I thought it was really well done. Harry, if, if, if you, you know, Matt saying you were kind of the one of the leaders in that. So let me ask you specifically, then what what do you anticipate, uh, you know, the movement to be and, the, and demonstrations to be moving forward? Uh, in the season and, and and you know the other the follow-up the second part of the first question is what do you have planned on sunday well the thing is is this is this movement is not going to stop and i will continue to fight for my rights and for change um and you know it's been it's been very very emotional um but also very positive and you know we just want to be heard we want to be seen and you know just just to affect cha- and, and make change um and for sunday we you know we have something in in store um i'm not gonna give you what we're gonna do but we do have something planned okay hey Kyrie. Kyrie, uh, just when you're out when you're out on the field on wednesday nights uh, during the demonstration just you know what's going through your head what are you thinking about what are you feeling during that time out there um tons of emotion um you know even walking to the field um seeing how many players we have in this league that are black and you know coming together as one um to stand up for what's right um it was it was very emotional and People had tears in their eyes, and people were, you know, happy, happy to be together. Yeah, it was, it was, it was moving. 
And how Tyrese. big a vehicle do you see um, sports and soccer, you know, in movements such as the Black Lives Matter and uh, BPC? Just as you have the eyes of the nation watching you guys being yearly spot back. Yeah, it's been it's it's been very um, eye opening. I'm sure for a lot of people, um, for myself um, including, but you know, it's, this is what we need. Um, This is what the world needs to see and to be a part of and to have conversations. It's, it's important that, you know, we, we let the world know, Hey, there's, there's problems here and this is what's going on and we need help. Kyrie, we talked with Rumba Mentali of the Sporting Academy recently, and he told us that you actually had a, I guess, a, a conversation with the players, whether it was a speech or more of a conversation with all of them. How important is it for you not just to be a leader in all of this in the sporting locker room, but throughout the entire organization from the top down? Yeah, it's very important. I, I wish I would ha- have had these conversations or was spoken to as a as a young adult, a young player. It's it, and this is my role. I take that upon myself to to have these conversations and to you know talk with the young players, um, no matter what the race is. Is be a good person. Listen to your your parents. It starts in the home. Um, how how you can possibly raise your kids to see things differently. Be open minded. Um, things like that, you know, positivity is, is what we need. And, and that's what I try to preach to the younger players, younger generation of players. Kyrie, Peter made the, the point of saying, hey, I can't speak for my players. It's This is the time to amplify their voices. And, you know, your teammate Beasler is backing every statement you're making. How important is it that we hear from the group like BPC, BPC and you and hear your voices and what your message is saying it's very it's very important um, but also I got to credit these and the rest of my teammates and the whole organization they've supported us they've been behind us the whole time and you know they're here for us and you know it's it's crazy um, we actually got together as a team before Juneteenth June 19th and we are able to sit down as a group as a collective and share stories the black players were able to share stories about dealing with racism and police brutality and it was just a very very moving piece you know it was some players had had no idea this was taking part in in our lives or had taken part in our lives and you know I, I give credit to, to the organization for helping put that together and the teammates, our teammates for listening and, and just hearing us out and just getting a insight on what we've dealt with before and stuff that people are still dealing with today. Um, but it's, you know, I, I'm blessed and SKC is, is, is on top of that and they're behind us. One more quick follow-up there, Kyrie. Have you all spoken to the NWSL players at all in regard to what they've been doing and just being proud soccer players taking a stand? I personally haven't. Um, I'm sure some of the guys have. Um, I haven't really talked much with the other players about that, but I will shortly. This is for Kyrie and Matt. Um, Peter answered this earlier today. What have been your biggest takeaways so far in watching the games that have been played up to this point, whether it's the broadcast, the on-the-field product, what stood out to each of you? Yeah, I, I, I think the level is, is high. Uh, the, the competitiveness of the games are, are where they should be, so that's encouraging. It's just different, though, uh, different without any fans. Uh, you know, I... I I don't know. I, I think they were trying to, you know, decide if they wanted the artificial fan noise in the background or if they just wanted to leave it quiet. And, and so, you know, you could pick up some of the players' conversations and have a bunch of microphones around the field. Me personally, I, I don't know. I, I can't uh, – I go back and forth as to, you know, which is better in terms of watching a game on TV. 
you know, you, I think the English Premier League is doing the artificial fan noise. So I kind of got used to that. But, you know, watching the MLS games, there, there were a few instances where we were able to pick up on, you know, conversations that guys were having on the fly. And, you know, some of the emotions and the, you know, sometimes colorful language um, that, that come out in some of these microphones, uh, I think could be an interesting perspective from some of the, some of the games. But, yeah, I mean, overall, the yeah, the games are the games are games. They're they're good games. They're competitive. And you know, I think for the most part, they're entertaining. Now let's hear from Sporting Kansas City coach Peter Vermees, who talks about restarting the season and his biggest concern going into Sunday night's game. I, I really think everybody's just chomping at the bit to play a game. So it's it's really we're we're now at the point where we finished our I, I would say our preparation practices um, for the most part up until now. Tomorrow is a little bit of a really tapering down day, and so the guys will be. Uh, I think really ready to go um, come tomorrow uh, right after training, just kind of getting themselves in their, their headspace, you know, and, and, and getting themselves, you know, into the mode of getting ready for a game. It's something they haven't done for quite a few months now. And so um, outside of, outside of the, you know, the game prep and all that stuff and, and video and all that, these guys are just, they just want to play a game. And so, so does the staff. Everybody's got, everybody's dying. So we're ready to go. Peter, when you have that sort of anxiety to get on the pitch and get ready, how do you get everybody to calm down and just play and execute? Yeah, it's a really good question. Um, it's it's probably what my biggest concern is is that not coming out of the out of the gates too fast, if you will, um, and then you know expending a lot of energy early on. I, I, I keep telling the guys we're just going to have to be patient. Game is going to be ninety minutes realize that you know we have subs but at the same time you just can't go out and just expend all your energy because five subs even though it's half you know basically half the players in the field it's still you still can wear yourself out pretty quickly and it depends on how the game goes too right if we're under defense if we're under pressure a lot and we're having to defend a lot then uh, we could wind up expending a lot of energy so we we got to we got to keep our heads um we just got to be focused and concentrated when the game starts not to give anything silly away, but we also have to find our rhythm in the game, and, and I'm hoping that's going to be through some some valuable possession in the game. Peter, can you give us a clue, maybe, to what sort of starting lineup we'll see, whether it being the first game back, any of the young, gay, young guys who are going to be getting some game time? Yeah, it's a great question, but no. Uh, well, it's one thing, yeah. I don't talk about lineups, uh uh, yeah, sorry, but just something I'll share with media. That'll do it for today and this week on Sportsbeat KC. Thanks to our production staff of Derek Donovan, Randy Mason, Savannah Smith, Beth Welsh, Jeff Rosen, and Chris Fickett. Tip of the cap to Sean Goodwin for sharing his thoughts on Sporting KC. And links to stories about the team and the MLS can be found in the show notes and on KansasCity.com. Hey, earlier in the episode, you heard me talk about the Sports Pass offer. It still stands, still a good one, 30 bucks for a year's worth of sports coverage, and that includes Sports Extra on the E-Edition. There are 25 additional pages of national sports coverage today. Well, here's an even better offer. Buy the entire Kansas City Star product. Sports, news, features, commentary, and analysis, the whole thing. You get all the stories written by my talented colleagues, plus additional news, sports, and business coverage. The details can be found at account.kansascity.com slash subscribe. That's account.kansascity.com slash subscribe. And whether it's the Sports Pass or the full subscription, you're getting and supporting the best sports and news coverage in Kansas City and helping us produce programs like Sports Beat KC. Thanks for listening, and we'll be back next week. <laughs>